Pāṭhi Pāścatyādhi Shatthādhi Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Ram 
I thought I was coming early, but I came late. <laughs> I can't really do. <laughs> Nobody can accuse of us being an uh, organized religion, right? <laughs> Especially in the West, they don't want organized religion, so we're perfect for them, huh? <laughs> so thank you all for coming this evening. How many people went to Shantipur Festival? Uh, that's why they came. They didn't come to the Shantipur festival. Huh? <laughs> okay. Sri Gorpanim Festival 2024 Mahotsava Ki. Yeah. This evening, we are going to have a nice discussion. And uh, Jamaster Bu prepared my notes for me. Basically, it's about the Mayapur Institute, but he wants it targeted toward a powerful Shastric journey. The powerful Shastric journeys in the Mayapur Institute, and these are all prepared, propel, pro, uh, propelled by Prabhupada's loving Vani. So there's also Vrindavan Institute. There's, as you know, now so many. And here in Mayapur, I think we have probably the largest, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, some has grown. And we're going to be discussing some of that history, and we're going to be talking about the effects of the learning that they, you get from the Institute, and a bit of the future. And it's going to be kind of an open discussion with all these senior devotees here who have been participating in this Institute for many, many years. So we, of course, most of these boys don't need any introduction, but for the viewers on the Mayapur TV, we have His Holiness Bhakta Vikna Vinas Nashringa Maharaj Ki. So, Maharaj, of course, has been a devotee since 1971, London, many services, currently traveling, preaching throughout Asia. And uh, I think for us, of course, every year, Navadi Dam Parikram. Still, my knees gave out. I couldn't do it this year. I'm sorry, Maharaj. I'll have knee surgery in June, so I couldn't come. But he's still going. Him and Kavi Chandra saw me, so please give some nice appreciation to Maharaj. And I don't know if you all are aware, but really the founder of this institute and training, which is not an easy thing to do, how do you organize this? Prabhupada, he wanted this. Maharaj will talk about that a little bit early, later. He wanted all his disciples to be, not just read his books, but to learn them in a systematic way, and we will certify it with some degrees. So this was Prabhupada's idea. So of course we know chanting Hare Krishna is very nice, and that's sufficient in itself. But we are also very philosophical, so that way we can defeat Maya within ourselves, and also help the others who are absorbed in Maya defeat Maya in themselves with this philosophy. So we have Jamasmi Prabhu. He's been involved with this council since 1977. You may not know it, he was a book distributor. Doesn't look like a book distributor, does he, huh? And he's huge in America, huge. So, of course, that was a um, very important service that was being, Prabhupada was emphasizing quite a bit. And to put that aside to help build this institute, that had to be a very big decision to make, you know. So we'll hear more about that from him. And then our current 
My Prince of Acharya, who's taking it to the new building. Isn't it nice over there? How many people have been to the new building? Say howdy bowl. Yeah, and I just went the other day. It's expanded even. Now they've got some more classrooms, the huts on the outside, and it's continuing to expand. This Grace Padmanabha Prabhu. And um, how many of you know that he's actually from where? Who you know where he's from? Very auspicious. One of our holy doms, <coughs> Jagannath Puri. Didn't knew that. I thought he was South Indian Brahmin. I wasn't aware. <laughs> of course, Bhakta Puri Shotamaraj, another scholar. So Puri Dam has their scholars also. And uh, again, he's keeping the charge going and continue expanding the, the, the facility and the classes. So let's give a welcome to Jamasmi and Papanavabhu. So Maharaj, we're going to start with you. Maybe you can tell us a little bit. As you and I know, I remember back when Prabhupada uh, brought up the idea of Bhakti Shastri degrees, and it's specifically for those who wanted Brahmin. Uh, I was getting my Brahmin right about that time. There wasn't any really formal classes, but I do know devotees, one devotee who took it, he said, in 1976. So, but can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, 1976, that was when they had the first Bhakti Shastri exam. They did. Was it Mayapur or Vrindavan? In here in Mayapur. Mayapur. Mayapur, yeah. I was in Calcutta at the time. I couldn't take the exam, but uh, I remember uh, the devotees. There were no lectures, there was no preparation. Everyone just came and they said, and <coughs> And anyone wants to take Bhakti Shastri examination, have the examination. And there were questions, you know, not very difficult questions, simple questions on the philosophy. And everybody was to answer, write their answers. Oh. I think everybody passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the devotee's name that I'm speaking of, his name is a shout out to Vaishnavananda, if you're watching, Vaishnavananda, our god brother. And he said, yeah, I came in 1976 and I passed Bhakti Shastri. Jai Pataka also. Really? Yeah, okay. Jai Pataka. I did my Bhakti Shastri in 1976, the same yeah. time. Okay. That same. There was Sasvarupa a... Maharaj set the exam. Wow, amazing. He was the one who set the exam and he may have probably marked it, I don't know. But he was the first one to set the exam. And imagine back then there wasn't all these nice facilities either. I think it was probably just the Lotus Building at that time in Yeah, there was only the Lotus Building. So, you know, everybody just sat in the verandas and wrote on bits of paper. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll lead us into Jamasmi because uh, Sasarupa is from that area. He's from the East Coast of the U.S. And uh, somehow or another, Krishna inspired him too make this nice, formal, organize it, and, and get it put into motion. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, my initial inspiration for Shastric study came in 1989, and I attended the VIHE. They called it the Gorpurnim semester, and it was in January, just after I did a Christmas marathon in Atlanta. Oh, not just now. And, uh, <laughs> It was just a, I'd been visiting Vrindavan since 1981 was my first time. But, whew, boy, that, did it ever open up to me, open up for me like I'd never experienced, so blissful. And I, as a book distributor, we were instructed by our authorities to seriously study Prabhupada's books. So I had been doing that for 12 years. But in that one month, I had a real strong sense I'd learned more than I had in the previous 12 years. Mm. Uh, Lord Kapila instructs Devahuti, Satam Pasam Gam Mamavirya Samvido Bhavanti Ritkarna Rasayana Kata Taj Joshana Dashva Pavargavartmani Shradavatir Bhaktir Anukramishati. So when we discuss these the Lord's pastimes and the philosophy and the association of devotees is very pleasing to the heart and to the ear and it accelerates our advancement tremendously and that's mm. what I experienced. So 
what was also remarkable, my experience in Vrindavan was remarkable, but when I got back to America, my personal book distribution results increased 35, 40%. So it was like, wow. <laughs> so naturally, that became part of my schedule on a yearly basis. And then I started mm -hmm. going twice a year. I'd go for the Kartik and also the um, Gorpani uh, semester. Okay, so then when I moved to Mayapur, um, I was working with what, the... What year was that when you came to Mayapur? I came here in uh, Gorpani 77. I mean, oh. 97, sorry. Okay. Joined in 77, 97. And, uh, you know, it was to, I had two young sons, and it was to give them proper education. And so I started working with the uh, international school. <coughs> and, um, you know, to help the school, I arranged teacher training courses, took a couple teacher training courses, and also a um, leadership management course. And I was amazed. You know, we had it in the Vaishnava Academy, and I had to turn so many devotees away because it was so... There was so much enthusiasm for it. So I thought, wow, this is an, it's some kind of indication of the potential of offering um, systematic training, you know, in Mayapur. So I met with Hari Sari. He was on the uh, uh, Mayapur Administrative Council at the time, and we met with Jayapataka Swami. And he loved the idea of starting an idea, but he said, under one condition, John Weston, you have to commit for a minimum of five years, five, <laughs> okay? Can you do that? Because he knew it wasn't going to be easy. Mm. And um, the, other th the other motivation that I had was that there wasn't any tertiary education facility mm -hmm. for young people growing up in the movement. And so that was a, also part of the um, impetus, you know, to try and get something like that going. Mm -hmm. So. You know, but then, you know, but the, the experiences I had studying in the VIG, I just loved it so much, you know, and I wanted to do something, help other mm. devotees experience that same powerful experience. Mm. Did you, um... <clears throat> yeah, it was really the Vrindavan where it's, they started. I remember we used to go for Kartik for one month at Kartik. Mm -hmm. Because Tamal Krishna Goswami was teaching, he would teach there, and Rabindra Swarup would teach, and Jayadvaita would teach something, and Saswarupa Maharaj would also teach sometimes, and Bhakti Charu Swami, they would all teach, you know, there were many courses going on, right? Giriraj Swami. Yeah, also. Giriraj also. So it started in Vrindavan, and then, then they started having it on Mayapur also. Mm -hmm. And so some people were in Mayapur and some were in Vrindavan. But usually it would be for one month at Kartik time. It's very intense, come yeah. for a whole month, you know. Every day, lectures. So it was like four hour <laughs> sessions or eight hours. You, you have your four hour session and then have your lunch. Hey, can you all hear us okay? Is it? A little bit can you? kind of. Can someone adjust the sound? I think it's a little too loud. It's vibrating. Haribo. Haribo. Okay. <laughs> you have to realize when Maharaj was talking about Rindavan, there's no computers. It was all paper and pen, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Paper and pen and book. Yeah. Old-fashioned learning. Everything we were fellow students. Yeah, oh. I met him there in Brindam. <laughs> we were <laughs> classmates. And that, that was what, 1980-something? 89 is when I first went. Yeah. They, they started in 88. Has, has the course changed much, or is it pretty much the same as it was back then? Or has it become a little more elaborate? No, there's a definitely a lot more elaborate. Okay, elaborate. But, but the basics are still there, the yeah. Bhagavad Gita, Nectar, is all okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Prabhu, so when did you first take your official training in Bhakti Shastri? Of course, he, he was a natural scholar coming from Puri, but... <laughs> yeah, I started uh, in the year 2003. Where was that? Mayapur Institute. Mayapur, so then Prabhu was... Yeah, oh, the master you know, was there, actually. He was uh, the leader. And... Um, I had some service in the guest house department 
and Prabhu would always encourage Mayapur resident brahmacharis who were inclined to study. From time to time he would just, you know, come to me, he would say, Hey, come, I'll give you a scholarship, <laughs> you know, in Mayapur on those so days. So it wasn't free? Huh? Yeah, he, he gave me a scholarship. Oh, but I'm saying for regular students, did they have to pay in Vrindavan also or were they giving yeah. it free? Yeah, yeah. It's always been paid. Yeah. Except in 76, I think, was free. Well, there wasn't anything but your test, so I guess they didn't have to charge. So, my okay. first introduction to Bhakti Sastri was because of Janmashtami Prabhu. He gave me scholarship and he encouraged me. Uh, I did in 2003, again, that was in Bangla, first I did. Mm -hmm. And then, again, I started in English. So, I did two times. Two times, okay. And uh, when I was doing in English, Maharaj was my Sishopanisha teacher. <laughs> On those days, we used to have class in Seva building, ground floor. <laughs> I still remember Maharaj, you know, he would not s sit. Just take the book, he would just you know, work and talk very loud and clear. Very encouraging. When I saw how Maharaj was reciting the verses and was speaking from his realization, mm -hmm. it really made it very lively in the class. And I was very impressed. Uh, Jaidut Maharaj was also a teacher, he was mm -hmm. teaching in Bhagavad Gita. Maharaj was teaching uh, Sisho Upanishad. So in that way, because uh, even though in those days we had like, you know, at the end we had only one test. You have to read all this, then you, know, you come with preparation, you have to sit there. It was a nice experience because uh, they had these objectives very clearly defined. Mm -hmm. Then when you read something, you know, stick, oh yeah, I am reading this philosophy, this is for my personal application, or this is how I can preach to people who I meet, and this is, oh, to understand Shastra is like this. Mm. It was a very wonderful experience. That actually, Janmashtami Prabhu intrigued me, I would say like that. Uh, what did I do? I you intrigued me. Oh, I intrigued you. Okay. <laughs> What, what service were you doing before you took the Bhakti Shastri? Uh, I was uh, serving as kitchen in charge. Kitchen in charge. Gada kitchen in charge. Where was this again? Uh, Puri or you were no, in No, no, here. In Gada, 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 Gada kitchen here. Gada, yeah. Gada kitchen. Okay. Yeah. And I think at that time also it was only English Bhakti Shastri. Only English, Only yeah. English at the time. No, so. no, we had Bengali. You had Bengali. We, we actually started with Bengali. That was the first. Really? Because I, I made a deal with the VIH. I asked them to help, help it get going. And they said, okay, on one condition, <laughs> you can't offer Bhakti Shastri for three years, okay? So I didn't exactly cheat because they don't offer, they didn't want the competition. So we did Bengali first. And then we did an unadvertised local, only locally advertised uh, English Bhakti Shastri. Mm -hmm. That's when Atul Krishna came on board. Oh, okay. And, um, and then we just, I think the third year, we just did it. So and, and we had no facilities. There was nowhere to stay like that. Classes were in your house, right? It was your house. In that house, right? We just we used to do it in, in the Iskan wall, housing. park. In Iskan huh? housing. Over here in the Iskan housing. Seva building. Yeah, Seva building. Yeah, Seva. all the classes were there. We had the first, the first two classrooms. The first classroom was one was our first flat. The second classroom was in the front of the building. Then we had the third classroom on the back side, in, or the next building on the Ganga side. Mm -hmm. So we had three classrooms. Some we classrooms were outside, uh, under, in the, under the tree or that kind of... Yeah. So we had, um, yeah, we had a, a kutir in the back too. That was another thing. And um, yeah, we have a 16 by 20 foot classroom. And uh, I remember, we really took off, I think it was maybe the, the fourth year or something, and we had like something like 80 students. You know? It was like incredible. <laughs> well, you, you were teaching by that time, Maharaj, you got involved, huh? With the Bhakti Shastri as a teacher? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, <coughs> <clears throat> how many people here have Bhakti Shastri? Raise your hand. How many want to have Bhakti Shastri? There we go, get them all up. <laughs> I was one of the reluctant ones. I took it last year after being a devotee like 50 years. I'm like, well, I need Bhakti Shastri. I've read these books four, five, six, seven times. <laughs> I know the philosophy. 
So, but anyway, they had a five-week course. I said, okay, let me, I'll breeze through that five-week course. And uh, again, anyone who has taken it, you'll be pleasantly surprised. It's not like studying in a university for, you know, engineering or anything like that. Because it's, it's Shastra, isn't it? And I, I began to feel like, especially with that accelerated course, it was four hours, go to lunch, come back for another four hours, and then in the evening you had to do all your work. So we we're kind of like, you know, Shukadeh Goswami and Maharaj Prikshit. It was seven days, 24 hours, no eating, no sleeping, this Krishna Kata. And I, it was really wonderful. I want to do Bhakti Vai Bhava. I liked it so much. I got so much out of that, you know. Mm. So, but I'm sure you all have met, you've met people who've taken it in the past and see how it affects their lives or Maharaj. Oh, yeah. I, we had one couple from Taiwan came and took the course. After they took the course, they went back. They wrote three books and they got them published. You know? Wow. <laughs> they, they started writing books, you know, in Chinese and got them published there. So it really had a big impact on them. It, it, to me, what it does, it, it, re, it re, I wouldn't say reconfirms, but maybe a better word, it confirms your realizations in Shastra. Because as you render devotional service, you're going to get realizations about so many things. So how do you confirm them? Just because I feel it? Now you can talk to other devotees and they go, yeah, 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 that's really wonderful, that's so enlivening. But then when you confirm it with Shastra, it becomes anchored in you. And like Mara says, they feel inspired to, let me start writing books. Otherwise, sometimes you have a little doubt, isn't it? So <clears throat> getting ourselves fixed in the philosophy, is, 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 uh, it will help your own devotional service greatly. Huh? So how, what about yourself, John Masmi? I mean, you've been teaching this course for so long. Any students come back to you and say, thank you, thank you so much? For this, this morning, um, a sannyasi, I was on the backside at Mangalarti behind Panchatattva, and the sannyasi came, came around the corner, and he offered obeisances to me. And uh, of course, I offered <laughs> obeisances to him. And then uh, we said, you may not remember John Masmi Prabhu, but I was in your first batch, and um, I, it was noisy, so I couldn't, he was telling me what his name is, but I couldn't quite hear mm -hmm. it, so I was going to see, so I got your, your uh, contact info, so I'll send it to you, but I think that was my old contact info. So, um, and I asked him, so what was your experience? It was transformational, am I correct? He said, oh yeah, incredible. So that's generally what I've experienced over the years, is that many mm -hmm. devotees, if they take it seriously, what I found is if, the, if um, devotees are very serious about chanting good japa, they don't see it so much as an academic exercise, but it's as a devotional exercise, mm -hmm. that they can make tremendous advancement. And, um, you know, really feel the, the Prabhupada's personal ecstasies are in his purports. Yes. And yeah. it's really powerful. You know, sometimes it just, things come alive. It's very special to get a group of people together who are all trying to study the books, you know. When you're in your temple every morning, you know, you have, you have a class, but you're not everybody's into it, you know. Mm -hmm. Some people are in a little bit, you know, some people. But, but when you're doing Bhakti Shastri, everyone's pretty much focused on, they really, they really, want to study it, they're, they're there for a reason, you know, they're really making a sacrifice to be there. I like how it's uh, actually it's interactive. It's not like you're just sitting there and being lectured to and then, you know, let me get the answer right. But it's very open. And uh, <coughs> the variety of devotees that are in the class, uh, this year's Bhakti Shastri, you'd be surprised to know they had his grace, Rameshwara, was in Bhakti Shastri. I wanted to go, I, even though I took it, I wanted to hear that conversation <laughs> in that class. With Bhakti, Dhamma, uh, Bhakti Damodar Swami was teaching, and Rameshwara is the student. 
And I was speaking to a couple of the voices. Oh, man, it's so wonderful, the conversations and the examples he was giving from, you know, his experiences. So you'll, you'll get a, a, you'll be sharing experiences with the devotees, which are all unique. You know, it's not that we all become, we all have realizations, right, Marge? But you'd be surprised how unique everyone's realizations are. And this Bhakti Shastra, you will bring those out more and confirm them. And you can share them with, you know, nice teachers and other devotees there. Even sometimes you'll, maybe you'll get some old Prabhupada disciples sitting there and start giving you some examples from, I remember in 1971 when Prabhupada said like this and we didn't like that. <laughs> so it's like a life experience. So well, how about you? So coming from Puri, you know, to me it seems like you know, the devotees from South India and Puri, they already know everything. Why do they need <laughs> Bhakti Shastri? <laughs> well, <laughs> I actually come from a family of educators. My father was an educator. Two of my brothers are <laughs> in the education field in our, you know, our place. And now I am here, I am also in the education field. Uh, in that you can see that education is there in the blood. But, you know, after I got involved in my upper institute, I have seen personally how this uh, strict training program has significantly increased the life of the devotees in different fields. Mm -hmm. I just want to give two examples. Sometimes, you know, devotees, they feel, even devotees also, they feel, oh, Bhagavad Gita is just like a philosophy, you know. It's a philosophy, hardcore philosophy. You know, how to relate it to our daily life. Well, Bhagavad Gita Krishna is speaking, is speaking the way of life. I went to San Francisco last year. Mm -hmm. I met with one student. He studied in Mayapur Institute when I first took over actually. He, he you know, told me. He said, Prabhu, this Bhakti Sastri has helped me so much. Even the right now, I am in this San Francisco city. I have my wife. I'm working, but I have never forgotten that my first identity is to serve Krishna. Mm. And I have to go to work in the office. And now I have learned the art of how to balance my life. And you all taught me in the classroom. So I mean to say, here is a gentleman. He has his family, he has kids. He's working in San Francisco. You know, what is the life <laughs> there? Mm -hmm. You know, so much of, you know, mood of passion. But this man is saying, I have learned how to make a balance in my life. Mm -hmm. So, one thing is, he has to work. What consciousness he should work, so that he is not deviated from his sadhana practice. He told me. Mm -hmm. So that is one example. Another example is some devotees, they are in our organization and after going through this training program, how they have become more inspired to take up more responsibility for Prabhupada. Mm. The example is Srivas Maharaj. Yes. You know, Prabhu he is now Guru actually from West Africa. When he first came, he did his Bhakti Shastri, he went back, then his GBC said, no, for next two years you are not going. Because he is craving to come back to do Bhakti Vaiva. But his GBC said, no, there is shortage of manpower, you cannot go. Unless you find a replacement, then only you can go. So he was waiting, then after two years he found, and he came back. Mm -hmm. He studied Bhakti Vaiva, then Bhakti Vedanta. He was so studious and he got so much inspiration after he went back, he said, it helped, to, helped me to become more efficient even in my management service in ISKCON. Mm -hmm. See, first I gave an example, with just a grahastha working outside, you know, he's also leading a very successful life and he's telling that Bhakti Sathya mm -hmm. has helped me. He has another man, he is still in ISKCON, he has become a guru now, he has more responsibility 
and he told i was it helped me actually to think in a structured way what i am speaking i am reflecting i don't want to do something which is going to backfire on students or on me mm -hmm. and then i requested him i said prabhu why don't you take up teaching he said oh that's very wonderful he had a dream again he has, like, he has time <laughs> that's what i'm saying yeah. when when you have found the test you will find the time mm -hmm. and he comes every year stay yeah. here for two months he still studying and teaching in my upper institute yeah i mean he told me he wants to have a uh, what is the top degree? Uh, Bhakti Sarabhama. Oh, okay. I think he's working on the Bhakti Vedanta at the moment, huh? Yeah. Almost finishing. So, how far have you gone in, the, in your Shastri degrees? Do you have some people who completed all of them? No, Sarabhama, we have not. Nobody's yet. got that far. How many Bhakti Vedantas? Bhakti Vedanta, we have first batch around seven students. This year, 11 students. Oh. What kind of devotees are taking the, the Eighteen bhakti? students have completed so oh, far. Just brahmacharis? And no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, Matajis are there, Prabhus are there, okay. some brahmacharis are there. Hmm. A mix. The, and the, we have the, now gender separate program, separate for the ladies, separate for the okay. boys. And that makes it even more you know, interesting because when you are with the same gender in the class, then you can discuss many more things which is you know, in a very comfortable manner. So in that way, many ladies also, they share their experiences that it is very, very conducive and inspiring for them. And some of you maybe, you know, you can join. Mm. We found it also good to help people who are not so educated. You know, not everybody can take these uh, Shastric study courses. We have people, very nice devotees, who are sometimes illiterate. You know, in Malaysia, for example, in Malaysia there's a, a Tamil community there. And the elderly Tamil people, they're often not educated. They never got education. So we started doing a course for them. Although they're illiterate, <laughs> We, well, we how, do you, how do you do that, Maharaj? <laughs> well, we, we have some nice devotees. There's one lady who, for example, there's one lady in Malaysia. She's Tamil. She's from India. And she teaches them to pronounce, to read the verse, you know. Oh. She gets them to read the Sanskrit verse and to memorize the verse. Because it's, it's very difficult for some people, you know. I mean, I know, uh, like... Uh, China, for example, uh, you know, Chinese people cannot read pinyin. They can They don't. They're not familiar with pinyin. Yeah. They read Chinese letters. So Malaysia also, they read Tamil, you know, and the Tamil pronunciation is different from yeah. Sanskrit. Yeah. So we got people teach them. Somehow they spend time. They can't read the books. They read to them. Adigo. Right? <laughs> because they're not able to read themselves. So this, this one lady who, who can read it, she reads it to them. And then she'll explain it to them as well. And she'll train them also to recite a verse. I, guess. I remember there's another devotee, maybe you know him, this uh, Paramananda Prabhu. Who? Paramananda Krishna. Where? He, Malaysia. He, he was a you know, headmaster and teacher school. Yeah, he was a retired headmaster, yeah. He came to do Bhakti Shastri here, and after he completed, he was so inspired, after he went back, now he is teaching to the children. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> he's so inspired. He said, oh, I can't stop. Of course, you know, he was a teacher, <laughs> school teacher, makes him more, you know, easy. And uh, he's so inspired every day. In the morning time, he's teaching them verses, little philosophy, and the children are very inspired. Mm. This is another transformational experience. Mm -hmm. That so, one lady from, <coughs> from USA, Boise, and Boise, Boise, Idaho. Idaho. She's published the Bhagavatam, canto by canto, for children. And she's got every chapter, she's got it all. She's got activities for them, you know? Not just write essays, mm -hmm. but she's got thing, games and crossword puzzles and different things. So many varieties of 
different activities. And t she explains each and every chapter of the Bhagavatam. She's done first five cantos already, every chapter. We have also started Maharaj in my upper institute. Yeah. Around 60 teachers are teaching now around the world to the children. Uh -huh. This is in Bhagavatam. Uh, every unit we have made it to one level. At the end, as you said, there are some tests, you know, crossword puzzles and uh, some artwork like that. Uh, around 60 teachers are now teaching. Mm. Like that, we, we want to take care of everyone, feel, yeah. you know, be concerned for everyone, give Krishna consciousness to people at all levels, educated and uneducated. Give everyone a chance. So there, there's no excuse for not taking Bhakti Shastri. <laughs> we can't say, I already know that I read these books 20 times, why do I have to do it again, why, why, why? Even Jai Pataka Maharaj, he, he actually, he, I think it was last year, he did Bhakti Shastri again, even though he did it in 76, I guess. No. <coughs> now he's doing, he finished Bhakti Vai Baba Bhakti also. Bhai Baba. This yeah. year he got Bhakti Vedanta. See, Haribo. So imagine the... It seems difficult, but actually is ecstatic. That's, that's the point we're trying to make here, so... But... Uh, another thing I guess some people may ask also, is there... There seems to be these institutes in Vrindavan, Mayapur, are there others besides those two places? Yes, there are. Who, who certifies them or accredit, accreditates them? Is there an organization above that? No, well, there is this uh, ISKCON Board of Examination. And where are they? In the clouds? I mean, That's does it... Back to Rupa. Huh? Back to Rupa down in the Rissa. Yeah. How many devotees are on that board? I don't know. Three or four. Um, I told Krishna's involved with that. Oh, okay. And um, back to Rupa. Not sure who else. So I guess after Vrindavan was really the only school at one time, yeah. and then Mayapur came, and then I guess then they started that uh, accreditation group around that time. Or were you competing? No, we have ours, you have yours. <laughs> no. Like for instance, if you get your Bhakti Shastri here, you can do Bhakti Vai Bhav and Vrindavan if you want, yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. It's all okay. Well, it's like universities, you know, there's different grades of universities, you know, you've got the Ivy League. So this is the Harvard. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know. Of course, Mayapur, it was, it's perfect for Mayapur. Living here is very nice, isn't it? So it's really conducive for people coming to study. And Prabhupada, of course, wanted Mayapur to be built like this. Well, not everybody comes to study. We do a lot more online now. So really? many people graduated online. Oh. Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vai Bhav. How, do, how, does that, how does that work online? How's the experience in relation to in the classroom? Well, it's not as good as having people in Mayapur. You get people online, you don't know how much they're paying attention, you know. Mm -hmm. and the feedback is a little... Yeah, it's not, it's not quite the same, but it depends on the people, if they're sincere. You uh -huh. get some people, you know, they just take advantage, you know, they don't listen, yeah. they don't really participate in the class. But if you get good students, it can be quite, it can be nice. One, one thing that I found to be helpful is that I had a standard that everyone had to have their um, video turned on. Yeah, that's a good thing. If you make it a standard, you must turn the video on. Because sometimes, you know, you ask somebody a question and they're not there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> their camera's on, but, you know, they got some picture there. Well, maybe they got to take care not. of the baby, you know, they had to run off for them. <laughs> Another thing is I would call them by names and in every lesson I'd have at least one um, interactive exercise where they do uh -huh. group work. And they seem to be pretty similar to what could be done, you know, oh, on okay. uh, in, in person. And the response that I got from the students. What about some of the, uh, what are the future plans? We see you have all that land over there now and of course you have to thank John Mosby Babu for being the pioneer and getting it all started, that's the hard part, I guess. You can only imagine, he's using his, where he lives, that was the school. Can you imagine that? It's, it's ne you never stop serving, it's always 24 hours. <laughs> but, 
Very, very good question you are asking me. Uh, in my understanding, this is backbone of Ishkan. Srila Prabhupada established Iskan to educate everybody in the science of Krishna consciousness. And that inspiration he received from Bhakti Siddhanta Susuti Thakur. If we go back, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Susuti Thakur, he has divided entire Vedic literature starting from Sruti into ten different compartments. And he has assigned what can be studied under that section. So currently, even though we are just simply studying Bhagavad Gita, Nectar Devotion, Nectar of Instruction, Shisho Upanishad, in Bhakti Sastra, in Bhakti Vaibhava only, Bhagavatam, Bhakti Vedanta also Bhagavatam. But he has given us a very extensive curriculum, which can be set to establish a university by itself. Like somebody made a comment that there are so many philosophers in the world, they read only Western philosophy. Our Jiva Goswami, he has written Sat Sandarbha. If one philosopher want to study maybe two sutras from this uh, Sandarbha, he may spend his entire life. I mean to say, our philosophical depth is so deep that a devotee can immerse himself throughout the entire life and he can be very happy and peaceful in Krishna consciousness. So our goal is, alongside what Prabhupada has instructed us to do, that is the first priority, Almost we are there now, Bhakti Vedanta, we are going to now start Bhakti Sarabhama. Then also we want to incorporate Bhakti Siddhanta Sodhi Thakur's curriculum, which eventually help us to be recognized as a university for Vaishnava studies. Haribam. Because Chaitanya Bhagavat gives this insight. On those days, people came from different provinces in India to Navadip, because Navadip used to be the hub of spiritual education at the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu also had his toll, Gangadas, Pandit he had toll, many, you know, Vyakarana, Kalpa, so Sahitya, people came to study. So, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, it is going to revive, and that revival has already started. He, men he did mention about many palatial buildings going to come up on the bank of Ganga, mm. just to give you a direct experience, which, which is happening right now actually. And also he said that, he wrote to Bhakti Siddhan Sodhi Thakur, he said, Saraswati, I have a special desire to preach the significance of Srimad Bhagavatam, Satsandarva, Vedanta Darshan, you have to accept this responsibility. Sridham Mayapur will prosper if you establish an educational institution there. Hare Krishna. Bhakti Siddhan Sari Thakur, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he, you know, in 1910 he instructed this. Hmm. I mean to say, this, you know, education in Mayapur, Shastrik education, if it is established properly, according to Bhakti Vinod Thakur's prediction, is going to bring prosperity, upliftment mm -hmm. to entire Mayapur. Mm -hmm. So our goal is we want to establish this as the university for Vaishnava studies and now students are coming from different parts of the world, we invite them, there will be facility, there will be library, admin, different classroom facilities, all it, teachers are coming from all across the world, students are also coming. We want to revive that consciousness of Navadip by the mercy of Guru and Gauranga. Hare Krishna, what do you think about that? Is it a good idea or no? It's like Hari Bol. <laughs> <laughs> also, something on the side, but of course, it's mostly it's financed by the tuitions, but they also are 
accept. Um, many people give donations. Don't you have yeah. big donors? And like yes, other universities, people so. will wheel their property to like Harvard. So why not leave your property to Mayapur Institute? Also, <laughs> but some big donors. You can speak about some. Well, one devotee has given me two crores. Rest just you know. One devotee has given me fifty lakhs. Some have given twenty lakhs, ten lakhs, and some have given me fourteen rupees, mm -hmm. seven rupees. <laughs> <laughs> yes, when Maharaj, I used to go to Middle East in the first in the year two thousand ten. I still remember that time dirham was like 14 rupees and they used to bring me to labor camp to give class. <laughs> then the boy who was bringing me, he would tell, Prabhu is doing this education program, maybe we are not able to go and study, our children will go and study, please help. I have seen one boy gave me half a dirham, means seven rupees. Mm. I have seen this, I am telling you. This is how we have collected right. and this building is there. Now, whatever, you know, charge we are asking students to pay as a tuition fee, that is just going to maintain the existing program. Mm -hmm. When we want to expand now, we want to do some more construction work, we need donations. Without donation, we mm -hmm. cannot. So, we are expecting to start our next classroom building very soon and uh, for which we have already started campaigning and some devotees have started giving little, little. If it so happen, then I think by the mercy of the devotees, we'll have our next building construction start very soon. I think we're running a little later. What is that? You, you you're going to construct for an ashram for the ladies or what? Uh, there are two maras. One, one will be ladies' uh, hostel and another one classroom building. These two, actually three buildings are very, very essential. One is classroom building, ladies' hostel and library and admin. Because so many students are coming, we don't have a proper library. Without library, it becomes very difficult. When we built the Juhu Temple, oh, Juhu Temple was opened in 1978, and just at the beginning of the year. Prabhupada departed November 1977 and a couple of months later they opened the Juhu Temple in Mumbai and there there was a library. They, 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 got, they sent devotee around India mm. purchasing important books. Prabhupada said this, he said you should have a library mm -hmm. and collect the books of the different acharyas and they have it there. And I used to work for the BBT. I used to do set by, uh, sell the sets of Bhagavatam. So I traveled around India. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I was traveling with Mahavishnu at the time. The two of us we were brahmacharis, and we used to go to temples. And they all have libraries. Mm -hmm. All these temples in South India, you know, Trivandra, Ananta Padmanabha, Menakshi, Tirupati, all these places. They all have a library. Every temple would have a and we would sell them Prabhupada's books. Hare Krishna. We would show them the Chaitanya Charitamrita. We'd say, look, your temple is in this book, you know. <laughs> and so they'd say, whoa, you know, they'd feel happy to see. They <coughs> have to buy it. <laughs> and nowadays, you know, so many devotees are coming to Mayapur. They sometimes ask, Prabhu, where we can go. Do you have a library? They ask me because they know I am running this school. You have a library? We can come and study. So library is a very important uh, you know, facility we need to be effectively import this education to the devotees. So we are sincerely meditating on that part also. Of course, we have the Bhaktivedanta Research Library in Calcutta. 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 Hmm. Yeah. So I think we have some final words. Maybe we'll start with John Masmi. They will have Maharaj summarize it all. Or? Are we going to 8.30 or? 8.30? I don't know. I came late, so I didn't know if, if he had to stop at a particular time. Do we have all night, Jama? Uh, we can go to 9 o'clock, right? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to eat dinner and do the video at the same time. <laughs> well, I, I can bring up another question, actually. We see in ISKCON we have this formal what? train. 8.30. Yeah, that's what Thank you. Scheduled. We have this formal training. 
Did this, was this occurred in the, in the Goryamov when Bhakti Siddhanta was there? Any formal cert certifications and things like that? You ever hear anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Ba Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vibe, that's all from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah. I thought this was Prabhupada's. Uh, no, but, no, no. but their Bhakti Shastri, it was, it was much harder than ours. <laughs> <laughs> I have question paper. Yeah, their Bhakti Shastri is our Bhakti Vaibhava, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they go very deep into things. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do, do you know if they still maintain those? I don't, because they all split up a little bit, so who... Yeah, they split maybe. up a bit. They don't have so much courses anymore. Oh, okay. Most of the books of the Bhaktivedanta um, Research Library in Calcutta came from the Gaudiya Mass. Oh, that was from their old Bhakti Shastri schools. We just took all their books. Their, their old libraries <laughs> were donated, yeah. Okay. Can, can you give us a little more history about how you pioneered this? Because you make it sound so easy, like you just, well, you know, we started in, a, in a my house. There had to be all kind of difficulties for sure, huh? Well, it just seemed like Krishna sent the right people at the right time. Like um, Atul Krishna came on board, and Maharaj came on board, Jaidvaita Swami, Kadamakana Swami. It, it was so sweet. You know, and we would take lunch together in the, in the lawn outside the building. And, uh, and then every two weeks, every two or three weeks, we'd have uh, Kadamakana and Aswami lead out of Parikama. And whoo, boy, put everybody in ecstasy. It was so mm -hmm. nice. So what I understood, you know, was the best way to do it is to, this was, we had the first website in Mayapur. And then oh, I, that's 90s. You were in 83 or so when you began in Mayapur. No, I came to Mayapur in 97. Oh, 90, okay, yeah, the computers. In 2000, we launched the MA. And um, one thing is that uh, most, a lot of our promotions was done through BTG. So I would book people uh, because it, it would take four months from the time they received it to, put it in, we'd have a full page ad mm -hmm. in Back to Godhead magazine every year. So I would organize so that um, we had our teachers lined up um, for Kartik so that we would post, we had a, um, a three-story high poster, big signboard on the side of Crunch Building. And um, you know, all the teachers that we would be having in, uh, starting in Kartik, and uh, so getting it all lined up in advance, and then I would do kind of like book distribution modalities. You know, like um, <laughs> he said, I intrigued him to come. So I would go out and I'd recruit people. We'd have a, right in the, um, about a mile of a courtyard, we had a, a, a sign-up table. This is kind of, we weren't using computers so much, we just did it all mm -hmm. by hand. And, um, we had a signboard with all of our courses, and then I would just go talk people into it, sign them up on the spot. <laughs> it was like, kind of, it was like a little and bit. Kind of huckster them in here. Hey, come on over, have a look. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like a book distribution modality. And so then that was a, a lot of the recruitment was done in person during the Gorpani Festival. We'd sign them up, mm -hmm. and then we'd um, put our promotions out very early, you know, on the internet. We used the Pam Hall, and then uh, we had our, whole, whole, our own um, page on, on the Pam Hall system. Then I, I was going to Middle East. I, was, I used to v visit regular to Middle East. Someday I knew from Taiwan had moved to the Middle East, and they invited me to come to the Middle East. So when I was there, I was talking to them about the courses we're doing in Mayapur. And they were like, they were like, wow, we gotta have this, you know. They were so eager, and you know. So now we have so we did so much programs there, so many courses there, in mm -hmm. Dubai and Bahrain, and these pl these people there, they love to study because mm -hmm. they're there in the Middle East, have nothing to do. Now, Maharaj, we are helping not only in Dubai, Middle East. We are also in USA. We are in Canada. We are in London. We are in Singapore. We are in Malaysia, South in Indonesia, 
South Africa, South Australia. Africa, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Even South India also, we have yeah. some uh, devoted there, you know, they stay connected with us. We work together. Oh. You know, they need some support, we help them. Because uh, we are the oldest institute in ISKCON and we have a lot of materials available with us. We have so many experienced teachers, so we help them. And it's like a different stage at this point. In the beginning, it was mostly word of mouth. Once people took the course and went back, that inspired so many others to come. Right. right. You know. Had positive experiences. That was our best. And then we have like, um, um, they would give um, kind of homages, you know, of their experiences. And we would post those on our website. But they were you know, very real. You know, and, and the devotees, um, yeah, the word spread. They had such positive experiences. They go back to the temples, and then devotees would. Yeah, Rad Nath Maharaj's disciples from Pune and Champati, they all came one year, and they all took the teacher training course and everything. They went back. They started that Echo Village, and they've got their own right. courses going on there. We used to we used to do forty-five courses from uh, um, Saraswati Puja to Gaur Purnim, and mm. I would. We bring ten brahmacharis from Pune to help manage it all. And that was very powerful. I would re I would start recruiting a year before, and get a lot of. I'd, I'd send out messages to um, about seventy-five uh, sannyasis, and you know who would always answer first was Bhakti Church or something. <laughs> it was I, I I was sick, you know, so I didn't go uh -huh. to his um, yasa puja, but. Um, and he would always respond, you know, and then um, he committed to teaching when he got really sick. And then Nagaraj, who's um, the editor for Back to Godhead magazine, turned him and to me, do you think he's actually going to be able to do it? I mean, he's really sick. And um, so I wrote, I, you know, I wrote, wrote back to Maharaj, like, are you going to come? And he said, yes, I'm coming. But then he ended up, he couldn't. Mm. So there was, um, you know, a lot of enthusiasm you know, that came from the senior devotees were very excited about what was going on with the Mayapur Institute and that enthusiasm spread. And they sent many of their disciples and the devotees from the temples. So it became kind of the in thing to do, you know. Mm. It's like a, Actually, I think they should make part of the Mayapur festival. They have the honoring of the book distributors, right? They yeah. should do that, that Bhakti Shastri, bring them up also one day and honor <laughs> all the people who completed their Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vai Bhava, you know. Well, we have a separate program for that. We do it. Yeah, well, in the temple room like they do in the morning, something, and it really puts some emphasis on it. Huh? Yeah. Because <laughs> it seems like it's just amongst the people who did it, in a sense, and you do it like that, so. Yeah, that's a very good idea. How, yeah, how? You, you could have like the top temple with the most Bhakti Shastri students in go. the world. <laughs> <laughs> Which temple had the most Bhakti by Bhav? Well, it's definitely going to be India for sure, I think. Yeah. I, don't, I think the U.S. is kind of lagging behind most of the other countries. Or? Some places they are doing on their own. Some places, as I said, we are helping. Oh, yeah, because we have that other organization on top that's... <laughs> they're logging all the, the people who are completing the courses. In Melbourne, Australia, they do, they do a lot of courses. Yes. They have a lot of Bhakti Vai Bhav graduates there. Hmm. In Mayapur, how many languages are they teaching the courses in? Huh? How many languages is it, are the different courses taught in? We are teaching currently in um, Bengali, Hindi, English, Russian, then Uriya, five different languages. I think Chinese also? Yeah, no, then also Tamil. 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 Chinese just we started one you know, seminar this year. We are hoping in the future we want to start Chinese also. Kind of a, a building just for Chinese. Yeah. A room classroom, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, they're not getting visas, so it's not practical. We've got to do it online. They do it oh, online. Okay. They, have it, they have it in China. They have their own thing. Within China now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Those who are outside of China, they can come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. People from Malaysia, Chinese from Malaysia can come. <laughs> or Singapore. There's Chinese people everywhere. We are doing Maharaj this uh, Navadip Dham Mahatmya now. 
we have around 12 students in this class and uh, more than 100 students are attending online mm -hmm. in Chinese. Yeah. yeah well, that's that's not much. You got a bill <laughs> you got a billion people there. <laughs> yeah. At least to start with something, Maharaj. Yeah. Could could we take some questions you think from anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone have anything they want to ask from these yes, uh, maybe we're, we're better to use your, We better use your microphone, Jamasmi. Prabhupada Kripa Mataji is a great educationalist there. She's also a, she was a very big book distributor in her time, a, a very big collector, fundraiser. Really? I See, think we should put you in charge of the raising funds for TOVP. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it built for I sure. Did, I didn't know you knew that about me, Maharaj. <laughs> um, well, I did Bhakti Shastri and Bhakti Vaibhava with Mayapur Institute. How do you go? And then I was waiting for Bhakti Vedanta to come out. And I was thinking, whoever gets it out first, I'm going to take it with them. So Vrindavan, uh, Vyaya, she beat you to it. <laughs> so I did, uh, I completed my Bhakti Vedanta with Vyaya, And now I'm waiting to see who's going to come out with Bhakti Sarva Boma first. So Ooh. I know that Vyaya, they have Buri Jamprabhu working on the curriculum. So what is the status with the Mayapur Institute? Uh, what is the, the prognosis? For that coming out, <laughs> it'll take one more year. <laughs> one more year. Okay. Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like PhD. You know, you can have one or two students. You don't have to have ten. You Actually, know, you know, in Chaitanya Chaitanya study, I would say some students will come as a, you know Bhakti Sarvamama students. They will be ready to take the test, but some others will just come to relish Chaitanya Chaitanya in Mayapur. Mm. So in that way, you have to make it like you know in a way. You know, befitting to the students who want to go through the test. At the same time, some listeners can be there to just, you know, realize Chaitanya Charita uh, And uh, according to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he wanted us to teach Chaitanya Charita by following Sandarbha. By following? Sat Sandarbha. Sat Sandarbha. Because the philosophy of Gaudiya Vaishnava is complete or you can say very explicitly explained in Sat Sandarva. When you study Chaitanya Charitamrita with Sat Sandarva, then nobody can take it lightly. They will understand the authenticity of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Mm -hmm. That was Bhakti Thakur's desire actually. Maybe we are in Mayapur Dham. If you all pray, Bhakti Thakur will you know, work through somebody to help us to start teaching in that mood. Well, Burijan Prabhu's books, which he's published on the Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam yeah. they give a lot of quotes from the Sandarbhas. Mm -hmm. If you read his books, you know, he's got the first one, Unveiling the Lotus Feet, and you know, like that. He's, cut, he's, he's, he's done the first six cantos, and then he did canto 11 and 12, and he the other, the other part's not published yet, but it, everywhere he's put the quotes, he's done the, the relevant quotes of the different acharyas, and especially Sandarbhas is there <coughs> for the Bhagavatam. So you're planning to teach uh, Bhakti Sarvabhama will be the full Chaitanya Charitamrita and also all the Sandarbhas? Not all these Sandarbhas, there are some part of the, for example, if you speak about Supersu, let me tell, okay? One example. In Chaitanya Chaitanya where the this discussion about Supersu is there, so that is linked with the Paramatma Sandarbha, certain section which is speaking that philosophy, that can be taught as a reference when we are teaching that part only in Chaitanya Chaitanya uh, So like that, you know, Guru Tattva, for example, okay? Uh, you can, you know, refer where it is explained. So in that way, uh, it will bring more authenticity and it will give a very solid understanding about our philosophy. Uh, because sometimes some people, they feel, you know, this Chaitanya uh, Charitamrita written in Bengali, you know, 
what is the authenticity of this book? So just somebody from Bangla, he came, just wrote something in Bengali prayer, so what? Some people, they take it very lightly. And Bhakti Nath Thakur could see that. That's why he, you know, particularly suggested it can be, you know, studied in conjunction with the Sandarva. And it will, it, it will bring more weight to the study program. Anyone else have any questions or? Well, we can summarize. We kind of get about 10 minutes. So maybe we can have Jamas, maybe some marks, and we'll finish with Maharaj, if you like. Okay, here we go. Summarize, okay. <laughs> well, some final thoughts, how about that? <laughs> how to approach the Shastric study? Sometimes devotees approach it like they would um, the, the educational experiences that they had on the material platform. But it's what I found to be the most effective is to encourage devotees to put a super high priority on their japa, and then everything comes alive. And you know, so if there's really strong sadhana practices, then there won't be that misconception. This is just academic, I don't want to get the grade. And, um, there's an impetus, you know, to study hard because I got an exam coming up. There's no question that's helpful. But that's sometimes a tendency that people get into. And another reason that people maybe don't want to take Bhakti Shastri because they had such negative experience in education prior to coming to ISKCON. So, study, you know, it's all dry. But this is, can be the most relishable experience in a devotee's life. And that's what we've experienced, you know. Some devotees have just been transformed by it. That's my own situation. So, that's why I think, you know, the um, Anandamaya Vyasat, we're all pleasure-seeking by nature. This is Krishna's quality of Krishna, and we have that, we share that. So this is actually the way that we can achieve the highest pleasure. We can get a high taste, we connect on a very, very deep heart level with Shiva Prabhupada. This will be an amazing experience, but we have to do it. <laughs> we have to put it as a high priority for our, in our lives. And then the major changes can take place where we'll get happier and happier and happier. That's what, you know, Chant and be happy. That was one of the original titles in one of Prabhupada's books. And that's what happens. And particularly if we study and we chant, and we do this in the association of other devotees, we develop loving relationships with them, we develop relationships with our teachers, and it's just powerful. Yes, yeah, it's important that we don't view these Shastric studies in a mundane manner and think about competition and want to be the top student and get the best grades, you know. <laughs> That's not <coughs> the real purpose. For example, there was one devotee, they wanted to get their second initiation. And they're very good devotee, do a lot of service in the temple. But they said, you know, I'm not a studious person and it will be difficult for me to do bhakti by ba or bhakti shastri. I have to learn slokas, you know, I haven't learned sloka. I j they only did service, they did a lot of cooking, you know, I spent a lot of time in the kitchen cooking offerings. But Jayapataka Swami Maharaj said, don't worry about passing or not passing, just take the course. Just hear, go and hear. So that's the main thing. I'm not worried if you pass or not, but I want you to go and hear these classes because it will do you a lot of good. So I think that's important for devotees. You know, you don't want to have this competitive mood. I'm the, 
you know, the top student, or I got the best <laughs> marks, you know, but have the, go for our purification, you know, by hearing and by associating with the devotees in a Krishna conscious manner will be very beneficial. Very, very nice understanding of what it means to take that class. What you just said is kind of what I experienced, but my fears are like that too. I'm old, I'm gonna go in here. My, I couldn't remember to be here at seven. I thought it was 7.30. <laughs> and I'm gonna do all these classes? Why should I embarrass myself? But it's not that, it's really, it's a unique <coughs> experience. This is not mundane education. It's like sitting there in, in Namashrayan hearing Maharaj Prikshit and Shukri Goswami. So, but not something. Yes. When it comes to Sastric study program, the key ingredients is attitude of the devotee. <coughs> if one studies Prabhupada's books with proper attitude, then he can no more remain in darkness, he can go to the light. Hare Krishna. I want, I want to add one little other observation or thought I've had about this. You know, Krishna consciousness, of course, we know, is, is such a variety of activities. Hearing, chanting, so many things. It's like being at a feast. You have all these preparations. You're trying to decide, what do I eat first? Oh, yes, I know that one. That's nice. And then you look in the back and you see a preparation that, I don't know what that is. I'll eat it last. So Bhakti Shastra seems a little bit like that. People don't want to eat that first. <laughs> they think, no, that one may not taste so good. Let's eat these in the front. But you're missing out, I'm telling you. I, that's my, I was so, after the first two days, I couldn't believe that I did not take it. I, could, I couldn't believe it. So all like March gave me so many reasons. Put aside your hindrances is not what you think is this a whole another Krishna conscious experience and you'll know it once you step into it and then you'll really appreciate it. How much you know, one thing that I, you were asking me about starting the Mayapur Institute and one thing that we had everybody on our team, we were chanting our japa in Prabhupada Samadhi. Mm -hmm. And phew, boy, the shakti that came as a result of that was phenomenal. But also, you know, doing this, you know, studying like this, um, allows us to really develop a, a deep, loving relationship with Srila Prabhupada. A lot of devotees are thinking, well, I didn't take initiation from Srila Prabhupada. I never met Srila Prabhupada, so how can I have a relationship with him? Well, here's the way. It can just be, it can be on the same level as someone that did take diksha, or even deeper. It depends, you know, mm -hmm. because this is really, you know, that what he's, he's made himself accessible. Just like there's a famous, when he came into the San Francisco temple one day, and there were all these news reporters there, and they, one of them asked Prabhupada, what's gonna to happen to your movement when you die, Swami? And they said, I will never die. I will always live in my books. Arriba. So that's, that's a key point, you know, that relationship, it unfolds in a very, very powerful way will understand, you know, the shakti that Prabhupada had, that it enabled him to spread Krishna consciousness worldwide in such a short period of time, and yes. it's still going. Yes. Yeah, Prabhupada's accessible to everyone. So, so the more, you know, we, we put so much emphasis on distributing the books, we have to think more about getting people to read the books yes. because we saw many times when we would distribute the books sometimes the people will throw them away or they, they they never read it or even they try to read it they don't understand it so one of the things which happened during covid was we started the gita gyan program with a, a chapter a day Yes. One hour class a day, one chapter a day. Start, started from Bangalore, but very successful. 
especially during the COVID time, we got a lot of people online studying Bhagavad Gita. And of course, they can go on and study Bhakti Shastri also. Hare Krishna. You wanted to say one final thing? Come up and give you the mic and then we'll, I think we went over 8.30, but. We started late, so it's okay. Oh. We have our I just wanted to say, um, you know, from my own experience that this kind of Shastrik study is so nice. Like, you, you get a taste for it. It's different than just reading the books on your own. Yes. Or, you know, That's it's, the it's point. like, there's like an intensity to it. You know, when, when like-minded devotees who really have a strong desire to understand Shastra get together with teachers who have a love for Shastra, presenting it, you know, with, with feeling, you know, with like, not just an academic intellectual mm -hmm. approach, but like with, with Ruchi, you know, <laughs> and it's contagious. It, it becomes like an addiction. That's why I was so, I'm so eager for Bhakti Sarva Boma because uh, it was like when every, every module of our course finished, we were just looking forward to the next one and looking forward to the next one. And then we came to the fifth module of Bhakti Vedanta and we were getting to the end, 11th canto, 12th canto. It was like this feeling like, Oh no, it's going to end. What are we going to do? You know, it's like, and then when the course is finally over, we were all just like plunged into, you know, Vipralamba Bhava <laughs> from uh, our classes. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really nice. It's, it's very uh, ecstatic and, uh, and very transformative. You know, the, it's, it's not just a it's not just a it's study. Not it's, academic. It's not academic. It's not just a study, it's a journey. It's mm -hmm. a journey in bhakti, and it takes you to places that you wouldn't imagine. Yeah. Did you do it online or on site? On I did the first, uh, I did Bhakti Shastri and Bhakti Vaibhava both on site, and then I did uh, Bhakti Vedanta during the pandemic, and it started in the pandemic, so that was online. But uh, they were very strict about keeping the video on, and it was a small class, and everybody was there and focused. And it, it, it didn't, my experience was not different from an in person class, except that, you know, during the breaks and after class, you couldn't like hang out and talk about it. But yeah. uh, we had a WhatsApp group for that. But during the class, it was deep. It was like, yeah, it was the same. Mm -hmm. For me, it was the same because. It, the thing is, it's, it's, it is, you get out of it what you put into it. So from the student's point of view, if you're there, you're attentive, you've got your book in front of you, you've done, you've done the reading beforehand, you prepared questions, you're listening, taking notes, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But if you turn off your video and go do something else, try to multitask because you know you can get away with it, then, you know, then it's yeah. going to be different. Now she's teaching students in Dallas. Yeah. She, yeah. has, she has her own school, she has got so much test. First we started Bhakti Shastri at the international school here, that's yeah. still going on, so I was part of the team that started that. Then I went to Gainesville, Florida, started Bhakti Shastri there, and now I'm in Dallas teaching Bhakti Shastri again, and I teach for, um, I also teach Bhakti Vaibhava for a couple of groups, for VIHE and also for a class that's based in uh, New Delhi, and uh, I've even taught Bhakti Vedanta some parts. So. so your life was transformed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a Shastra addict now. <laughs> you can't get enough. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is another form of nectar we're trying to tell you. Don't miss out on it because it looks strange. Ah, you know, I don't know what that is. I remember the first time I took some Prabhupada Maha. It was here in Mayapur and the, and the first dish I saw was this Corella in its subject form. I didn't know what it was, and I oh, okay. And it was, you know, of course it was, uh, it wasn't accustomed to Corella, <laughs> punch and taste. But anyway, it was, it was nectar. My point is, again, the nectar that's involved in this school, you'll be surprised. Don't, as Marj, I like Marj's summary again. Don't be afraid of it, and, and it's not a competition. And it's a, it's a sharing experience. And you won't be disappointed, that's for sure. Yeah. Even if you're old Prabhupada disciple, I got one guy brother, I keep trying to make him go. He's like, no, I'm not going to do it. No, no, no. I think I'll just drag him on the plane. So. And also we've seen, like, because in, in America we're making new devotees, and there's a big difference between the ones who actually 
complete bhakti shastri and the ones who kind of like don't you know they don't do it or they they uh, you know they opt out or they start doing it and then they they give up well i'll admit i four years ago i paid for the online course and i never started i kept making excuses <laughs> pain of the unsaved it was it was a subtle fear i have to admit and so I'm going to be embarrassed by these youngsters and this old guy is going to, you know. <laughs> so, and then I got to my report and they said, five weeks? Okay, I can do five weeks in tents. Let's do it. So. Well, the, one, the ones who do it, they become really solid, you know, because they, yeah. they understand Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission and they, they get that inspiration. They get that, they feel called, you know, to really devote themselves to pushing forward Srila Prabhupada's mission because they get it, you know. Otherwise, they kind of like go off and, you know, get married, get a job, do their thing and chant Hare Krishna on the side. But the ones who really like seriously, take Bhakti Shastri seriously, they become more likely to become fully dedicated. Like, this is what I'm doing with my life is serving Krishna, serving Srila Prabhupada's movement. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you Very all. Words, please. You huh? can final words and shut it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to thank all of you for your eagerness to come and hear. And we encourage you also come and join us and study Shastra together. I shri my poor and satu ki. Yeah. All glories to the sum of the body. Thank you. Hari Bol.